Hey everybody, sorry if you can hear any of the traffic outside. I'm filming this on my phone, like the old days. My camera's fine, there's nothing wrong with it. I just didn't feel like digging it out, charging the battery, you know, over and over again. Because this is going to be kind of a vlog. I haven't done a proper vlog in a while besides just sitting here like I am right now and talking to you. I wanted to show you guys the process of how people prepare for a Comic Con. How we get ready to be an artist alley and everything that leads up to it. Because what you guys all see is just the end of it. You just see it at the easy part for us when we're at our table and we don't have to worry about anything besides selling stuff and collecting money. You don't see the hardships that go into it. And we've had a few people who were, I think, not deliberately rude <laughs> come to our table in the past and they don't seem to understand how much work we put into it, how exhausted and in pain we are by the time the con actually opens. So I'm hoping to shed some light on that and help some of you who might not know how difficult it can be understand better why things are priced the way they are, why we might get tired partway through the day. Just, I hope that this helps you end up with a greater appreciation for what we do in Artist Alley. So, I'm going to Motor City Comic Con next weekend. I'm going to Michigan on Monday. It's currently Saturday. I'm going to be there for a week, and then I'm going up on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for that convention. It's the 30th anniversary of it, so it's going to be huge. It's going to be bumper to bumper nonstop. I am going to try to vlog everything that's happening before the con, and I'm going to try to vlog some of afterwards and how tired we are, but how happy we are too. I want to do my best to vlog some of the convention itself, but I can't really make any promises with that because of the fact that it is going to be very busy. And if it's so busy that it's just bumper to bumper um, pedestrian traffic the whole time and people are constantly at our table, I'd rather, you know, make sure they're taken care of and that I'm selling to them than worrying about getting my phone or my camera out. But I'll do my best. So over there on the floor where that giant iMac is, that's where I spent until like 7 in the morning yesterday because I needed to get prints done. You may be wondering, well, if it's only a week before the convention, why the hell did you wait so long to get your prints done? And the answer is because if you're doing Artist Alley, chances are you have another 9 to 5 job you have to go to every day. This isn't your only job. You only have a few hours every day to get art prints created for the con. So you are literally working on what you're going to sell at your table all the way up until the last minute. There have been times when we are so busy trying to get it done that we actually have to print them the day of the con. We've actually had to take the printer to the hotel with us in the past. That's just one of the things we have to do in preparation for conventions. We are up for at least two weeks straight until, you know, three, four in the morning trying to finish our pieces in time and get them all printed. And I'm going to tell you right now, printing isn't cheap. You have two options. You either have to get a really, really high quality printer that is for professional use. Like I have an Epson Artisan 1430, which was a $300 printer, and every time I get ink for it, getting the whole pack of ink costs me almost $200. That is difficult. And then if you don't want to do it that way, you have to find a local print shop and hope they do a good job. Our problem was every time we used a local print shop, they did a terrible job and they didn't do our prints well. Here's some of what I managed to get done last night. I literally only slept for an hour last night because I was trying to print all of these. We actually have two portfolios. We have one that's filled with the typical stuff that people actually come to your table to buy, and the other is just filled with pieces from our graphic novel series so that people can see them close up. We have book one and two pictures and book three, which isn't released yet. It's not released until August, but it can give people an idea of whether or not they'll be interested problem here. There are 27 prints here and 
by the time I got to print number 27, I completely ran out of black ink and I have to go like 20 minutes away on the highway to go get some more black ink, which is very, very annoying. And because there's black in every piece that we do, I kind of have to have black ink or I can't print anything. So we're going to have to rush out on our way up to Michigan to get some more ink or rush out tonight and do the rest of our prints because this isn't everything. This isn't everything that we want to bring with us. Not to mention, not everyone does art prints like this. I also knit and I make things out of clay and I make perfume. There's a lot of stuff that we create and bring to the con and all of that takes time. And when you think about it, each of these items that we create takes at least eight hours, sometimes longer than that. And for the most part, we don't even get paid minimum wage for our time. We mostly just get paid what we spent on the items plus a few pennies extra for profit. It's the morning of the day we set off for Michigan for Motor City Con. I accidentally woke up at like five in the morning, need to be up to get out the door by 7.30 in the morning, so it was just not worth my time to go back to sleep for even a nap. I'm exhausted, not just because of that, but because I've had like a three-day flare now and it's showing no signs of going away, which means I get to be in a car for eight hours with a pain flare. Sorry about the really abrupt stop to that last portion of the video. I wasn't expecting it, but Phoenix just called because she was out kind of just driving around, getting used to the rental car that we're in. I'm in the car now. We're just kind of driving around, waiting for the bank to open. Bank doesn't open until 9 o'clock, which means that we're going to be an hour behind when we were hoping to get on the main roads to Michigan. But that's another one of those things that you kind of have to deal with when you're getting ready to do Comic-Con. The fact that you kind of have to get change out. We have to get at least $200 out in smaller bills because no one ever has change. We do have a card reader. You should always bring a card reader to Artist Alley with you, but not everyone's comfortable with that. I can understand that. That's fine. The other snag that we've hit on our way to the con is that even though I was up until 7 in the morning trying to get prints done, we ran out of only black ink. And you know how all those lovely professional grade photography printers are. Once only one inkjet is gone, the whole thing just doesn't want to work. And black is kind of important. I understand why it can't really print anything else. We couldn't get the printer into the car. It's very big. It's very heavy. It was going to be really hard to fit in here, and the chances of it sliding around and being damaged when it's a really expensive printer were pretty high, so we opted out of bringing the printer with us. The problem is we have at least four more sets of really important pieces that we need to print, so I'm going to try my best to get them printed at my parents' house, but they just have like a normal, regular, like, Canon color printer. If the quality is completely different from what I normally do, I won't be able to use it, and I'll probably have to go into Staples and get some printed really quick. It'll be fine. It is Fire Sphere stuff, so it's original artwork. I know sometimes Staples is really funny about fan art, but fan art isn't what I need to print, so I'm okay there. But yeah, that's where we are right now. Once we're on the expressway and we're actually truly on our way to Michigan and we're not just trolling around in the morning, I'll update you guys again with more of what's going on. Excuse the terrible quality of my laptop's video, but I was editing and I wanted to add this in really quick so that the jump would make a little bit more sense. I had meant to take some video for you during the car journey so that you could see on the expressway the changes across each state we went through. Unfortunately, I was unable to pull out my camera even once during the car ride because I ended up having a pain flare that was so bad we actually had to pull over. I was doubled over in my seat. I was screaming. I literally couldn't function. I couldn't breathe. It was really, really bad. And there were a couple of reasons that this unfortunately happened to me. One of them was the fact that I just have difficulty overall traveling long distances and I didn't have the money to fly. I didn't have the money to fly this time because it cost $400 for a round trip. And on top of that, I also couldn't fly because 
we were going to a Comic Con, and when I tried to get a hold of the airline and let them know what we needed to bring, it was going to be this whole to do to get even half of what we needed for our table onto the plane. So it just made more sense to drive. But I do have a really difficult time, no matter what method of travel I take, traveling long distances now. There's nothing I can do about it. Trust me, I loaded myself up in pills before leaving, and it did nothing to help at all. And the other reason this happened was because it's meant to be a six-hour car journey. And honestly, since you're on the expressway for most of it, it really doesn't feel like it's that long at all especially when you have good company and ways to entertain yourself in the car. But my dad didn't want us to have to take the toll road because the toll road was going to cost eleven and a half dollars and we all just agreed that's just kind of silly to have to pay just to cross into a new state. So he looked at Google Maps and when he asked for it to not show him toll roads, it said that avoiding the toll roads would only tack on an extra half an hour for his journey. So we were like, oh, that's not that bad, let's go. That's not what happened at all. It took us around multiple different roads. It kept on getting us lost. It kept on not telling us about construction. So what would have been a six hour journey became an 11 and a half hour journey. We were on the road longer than most people's work shifts. And I just physically couldn't handle that. So I couldn't get my camera out because I was in too much pain. And on top of that, I didn't think you guys would want to have to see me like that because it just wasn't very nice. It wasn't very fun. <laughs> but I am going to show you some little videos that were taken in Michigan on my family's farm. And I'll show you some pictures of some of the places we visited before wrapping this video up. so I am back from the convention now finally I actually ended up spending about a week and a half in Michigan which was very very nice I needed that but it definitely came with its ups and downs and just like before I left I can't be bothered as tired as I am to pull out my camera so I'm just filming this on the phone sorry if you don't like it I promise as soon as I upload this video I'll resume my normal video recording and editing practices but overall it was pretty good it was a brand new audience that I've never released the book to before and it was pretty well received. Book sales for Fire Sphere were about 52% of our overall sales so that's awesome. That's the highest number we've ever had. It's, it's over half. Over half the people who visited our table wanted a book over fan merch which is unheard of at a larger scale convention like this. At least I think it is. Most people are there looking for things that they already view as familiar. Not everyone wants something new. And we also got invited to three other conventions that happen in Michigan each year. Luckily, not during other conventions here. And that was pretty cool. One of them is brand new, and it's kind of like an inclusion convention that's more for um, people that tend to be judged a little too harshly in, whoops, sorry, regular everyday society. It just kind of gives them a good safe place to be, and it's for creators who do more stuff centered around like LGBT inclusion and um, racial equality and things like that, 
rather than, you know, your same old, same old. And the other two are not brand new cons. They're not very old and they're not very big. But honestly, financially, we do better at smaller conventions because, <laughs> again, less people are looking for what they're already familiar with. And more of them are looking for something new at a smaller convention. Never put your nose up at a small convention because honestly, you can make a lot of money and a lot of fans at those because they're generally a lot shorter than the larger scale conventions. And because they're shorter, that sense of urgency is more present in people. They think, oh no, I have to get this right now because I don't know when my next opportunity will be if I'll even have one. So they tend to drop more money at your table all at once. The other good things about those second two conventions that I mentioned that we were invited to are that they're creator-only conventions. There's no celebrity guests at all at these conventions. It's only for people who are selling something that they make themselves. And I live for those conventions because I think a lot of people don't realize so they don't appreciate how much work goes into creating a graphic novel especially if only one or two people are working on it it is so hard you take like a year already trying to write your whole story out then you have to do all the drawing and the coloring and the shading and everything by yourself and it's really crunch time you work non-stop until like 3 4 30 in the morning every single day trying to get these things done in time only to hope people are going to like it, to hope that they'll actually buy it and enjoy it and come back for the next book in the series. So when we're outshined by these towers of comic books that already exist or these towers of fan art, it does bother us. It bothers us a lot. Like, yes, we understand that you put a lot of work into fan art too. We also have fan art that we sell at conventions, there's absolutely nothing wrong with selling it. I don't have a problem so much with the people selling fan art as I do with the fact that most people go to these conventions just to buy that, and then those are the same people who end up complaining that there's nothing new. It's like, well, no, there is. There's actually a lot of new stuff out there. You're just not giving it a chance. In terms of doing Motor City Comic Con again next year, I'm not 100% on it yet. There were definitely some hiccups in the road, but I also had things I really liked about it. I want to talk to my publisher today and get his take on it and see what he thinks because it is something we need help with. It's a very expensive con to do by yourself and a very physically demanding con to do by yourself. So definitely, if you ever think of doing it, take some extra people with you. Other than that, I'm really sorry that I got no videos at all at the con. I didn't even get photos at the con. It was so busy and there were so many people. I never even had enough time to turn my camera on during the convention. But I will try again for Sci-Fi Valley. That's in about two weeks. And hopefully I'll get a better video of the actual convention scene for you then. But I hope that you still kind of enjoyed this, even though it wasn't my most exciting vlog, just so I can get something out there. And as I said, I promise that my regular video and editing quality will return in the next video. I'm just tired from this. I'm happy, but I'm tired, and I just kind of needed a break.